Now, in the last couple of decades, we've seen a gradual transition into attire becoming a bit more casual. And this is a huge departure from uh, just even decades ago when dress bespoke style attire was really the norm uh, for people living in a business environment and just more often seen in just regular everyday wear. But nowadays with a lot of people working from home, I think there's just been this gradual shift. And part of that has happened and just been reciprocated with the world of watches as people are looking for more pieces that have more casual sporty undertones, but can still play that game of being a bit more dressy when it's called upon. So today we're gonna be looking at some of the best everyday style watches under $1,000. So mechanical watches here today, I'm not gonna be covering dive watches here just because I think that probably warrants its own video. And then in addition to that, it would make this video very, very long. So no external rotating bezel, still would like 100 meters of water resistance to be suitable for a variety of environments. We're looking at mechanical watches again, as mentioned, and also getting a sapphire crystal for whenever possible to provide a little bit more uh, resistance to wear and tear. Now, all these watches, again, gonna be under $1,000, but if you're looking for something to slightly out of this price range, one watch I would definitely recommend is the Nomos Club Campus, available on teddybaldestar.com. Also have a full in-depth review on the product page that I can link in the description down below. Teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of Nomos watches. And the Nomos Club is kind of that entry door into the world of Nomos. I really commonly associate Nomos with many of their dress-oriented pieces uh, and doing it in a modern context and fusing in kind of Bajas, Germanic style elements to really offer, I think, something very unique. But the Club Campus offers a lot of the same types of design elements that maybe one would associate with other pieces from Nomos and doing it in a more affordable package you're getting a Nomos Alpha Manual Caliber within which Nomos is using their own proprietary components to construct and it's a very attractive looking move it is of course manually wound uh, so if you're more used to automatics that might be a shift but uh, for around 1600 bucks or so you really can't do much better from a German manufacturer. Of course, you could look at brands like a Zinn, uh, but very different in terms of what you're going for in either direction. So teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of Nomos. Check out the Nomos Club in the description, full review on the product page. Now to begin with some watches under $1,000, more on the very low end, I think Orient is obviously a great place to always look at. I One I always mention is the Orient Maestro, but to offer something different here, I wanna look at the Orient Commuter. So this is a watch that is commonly just displayed and presented under the context of just a traditional reference, a long reference number rather than the name, but many associate it as the Commuter. Now this is a watch that kind of fits in a middle ground, not as dressy as the Maestro will be, but still offers a lot of the same type of intrigue and of course producing a lot of great value in the process. Process, of course, coming with Orient. So 180 or so dollars here, you're getting a fantastic watch at that. I will have Loom on this piece, unlike the Maestro that we commonly uh, will bring up on this channel. You're getting an in-house automatic movement from Orient. 50 meters of water resistance, so we kind of are cutting some corners here with that mineral crystal 50 meters based on the criteria at the beginning. But I thought it was a very interesting watch to mention, 41.9 millimeters with that case size, but very compact lug to lug distance of its size at 48.2 millimeters and pretty solid thickness of 12 millimeters. Great change of pace and a watch from Orient that probably isn't considered that often. And as one other watch that's gonna kind of bend the rules here in regards to that Sapphire Crystal mention uh, is going to be the Seiko SRPE. I'm gonna look at the 057. So this whole collection is such a awesome, just value-packed type of proposition when looking at this range of everyday watches. I think these do lean quite sporty compared to some of the other watches that we'll be looking on this list, uh, but depending on the strap and what you choose to really pair it with, you can totally get a different look depending on that direction that you go for. This version with the black dial and the kind of gold accented just dial elements will assist in this area quite a bit in regards to maybe dressing it up compared to some of the more traditional sporty options and dial variants, but 100 meters of water resistance, very wearable case if you're somebody kind of wanting something in the middle ground and kind of using the Seiko SKX uh, case architecture minus that external rotating time elapsed bezel. You are getting a hard lex crystal on this, so that is one thing of consideration, but you're also getting an upgrade with the 4R series of movements compared to the 7S26s that we had often seen uh, in these Seiko 5 options in years prior. Now, next up, we're gonna be looking at the Laco Augsburg. So this is a type A style dial from a German manufacturer in Laco, and is probably going to be the better option between this and the Aachen of being 
more versatile just given that type A style dial. I think the type B is a bit more leaning into the direction of pilot, Flieger, Navigator style watches and won't maybe be dressed up the same way. Type A, great legibility, great contrast given the intended original function of these timepieces. And also despite the activity on the dial is not disruptive. It's easy to read, but also can be worn in a variety of different environments. You could dress this one up a little bit more, I think, than maybe what some people would let on. I think it would look great, say on even a reptilian style strap and would look the business. And one of the great things about Laco in comparison to some of these other uh, brands that are creating these Flieger style watches is the fact that they're doing it uh, with Miyota calibers, which is going to allow these to come down significantly in price compared to the typical $1,000 you're gonna see from, from the Swiss uh, base uh, movements that are gonna be housed within other Laco watches or brands from like Stova, for example. But a great option if you wanna go for this more pilot-oriented style, Sapphire Crystal, of course, and then the Miyota caliber within here is hacking. So they do upgrade these with hacking movements. So that is a big plus when looking at this watch as well. Okay, so I don't wanna be looking too much at like boutique, independent, micro brand style watches in this range just because that would also make this video quite long. So I'm going to link in the description to a helpful blog overviewing a lot of great micro brands. And I also have a video that I can link to down below as well if you want to dig a little bit deeper into this realm. But one I would like to put in a say $500 range is with Trasco with their Summiteer. When I reviewed this piece about a year and a half, two years ago, I was very impressed with what was being packed here. In terms of the design, I don't think it's the most original thing that you're ever going to see in the world, but very tastefully done. But the, probably the best thing about this thing was just the case in terms of its wearability, but also in regards to the surface treatment that is taking place on this watch. So this watch case is going to actually be rated at 1200 HV on the Vickers hardness scales. So that in technical words is going to be the same as what Damasco or like a Zin Tegimented case is doing. And I did a little test when reviewing that watch, kind of trying to scratch the case away. I had an untreated link with a treated link and you could see a great uh, discrepancy in the differences between those two and how well the watch was actually resisting scratches. So to see that in a $500 watch is rather impressive. You're also getting a 9000 series uh, caliber from Miyota inside, which is a great upgrade from the 800 series that you're going to commonly see. It's a four hertz beat rate uh, up for that movement there. So getting a nice clean sweep at the second hand. And of course, sapphire crystal, 100 meters of water resistance to give you a lot of just versatility in the area of the everyday. Now, if you're looking at, say, the best automatic watch from a Swiss brand in this $500 range, one that maybe is the best, if not the best, it's at least on a very short list, is the Hamilton Khaki Field Auto. And this watch for just over $500 is packing tremendous value. 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal. So that 100 meters of water resistance is a nice upgrade from the Khaki uh, Field Mechanical, which is going to have a hand mount movement within. It's gonna really appeal more towards that uh, vintage military style timepiece that uh, Hamilton, of course, has a lot of track record and uh, history involved with. You're getting a reworked at a caliber within, which is going to allow this movement to operate at 21,000 600 vibrations per hour and getting an 80 hour power reserve. Also getting a nice case wearability, 38 millimeters with the case, but it's gonna wear probably pretty true to a 39 millimeters in actuality. So that should be great for a variety of different people out there. It's also not gonna have those faux loom markers, which I know could be uh, sometimes a polarizing issue in this world, but uh, getting a watch like this from a brand like Hamilton, 80 hour power reserve, 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, it's just one that checks off the boxes and has a design aesthetic that of course is very mass appealing. Now, when looking at Seiko in this 500 to like $800 range, there is quite a bit when you look more towards the JDM models out there. I think many people know the Saarb collection as being a great place to look. The Sarkses as well as being another great option, but wanted to look at a variation of the Alpinist family of watches and a watch that we recently reviewed with the Seiko SPB 157. So this version, a blue dial variant from this family of Alpinist models that is a bit different than what some people might associate with this range of watches, partially because of the more kind of uh, just clean dial that you're going to find with this one. So no compass bezel along the inside and also just one singular crown at the three o'clock. Also getting some pretty wearable case here, but the same elements that maybe a lot of people would like about the Alpinist is still remaining here. Very beautiful dial here. You're getting a cathedral style handset, which is very nice. Also, you're getting 200 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal. So in regards to the overall just utility of this piece, I think there's a lot there. And unlike some other Alpinist models, it does lean 
farther into say the more casual dressy environment rather than the tool I would say watch environment of which some of the previous Alpinist models were maybe catering to a bit more, uh, but still offers all the elements that would be associated with that going towards the tool watch route while giving I think a bit more uh, versatility in regards to say an average everyday wear. Now, when it comes to a watch that has been probably one of the most highly regarded pieces in the last, say, 12 to 18 months, I think the Tissot Gentleman Powermatic 80 Silicium might be close to the top. At around $750, you really can't do much better in this area. It is a bit more straightforward. It's not a very daring design. It's, it's sometimes, for some people, a bit generic, but that I think when looking at an everyday piece is I think, almost a plus at times, if you're just looking for something that can just do it all. And this one certainly can do that. 40 millimeters with the case, also getting 100 meters of water resistance, also a sapphire crystal, and then also getting a nice movement inside with a silicon balance spring uh, to help with shock as well as defense against magnetism. So for a watch around 750 bucks, this is definitely a good one at that. 80 hour power reserve as well. So if you're going for an everyday wear, there's a lot to like in that area. And then the indices on this one, when you get up close to the dial, they really do pop. A bit more polishing throughout the case and the bracelet does leave a little bit to be desired, but overall this is a fantastic package from Tissot. Now also falling in this range of being able to do it all from a Swiss brand, Got to look at Certina with the DS1 Powermatic 80. Now these watches are going to cater a bit more towards the aisle of being dressy, but if you're any bit familiar with Certina as a brand, you'll know that they have true tool watch, utilitarian style roots, uh, and just really manufacturing well-made, very resistant types of uh, timepieces that I think a lot of people will like. Now fusing these two elements together, I think creates a great everyday option. Uh, this one coming with a 40 millimeter case, you're also getting a Powermatic 80 movement inside here, which is going to certainly help with that power reserve and creating great everyday wear, 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, solid thickness, and just a brand from Certina that probably gets overlooked quite a bit. And also kind of falling in the same regard is with the Mito Multifort Gent. Now the Multifort series does have quite a bit of different options within them, many of them, some being cost certified, and Mito is producing some of the most certified uh, chronometers out there on the market. I believe they're in the top four to five out there in the entire industry. They haven't been disclosing those numbers for some years now and who is actually submitting watches for chronometer testing, but Mito is right there near the top, something you probably wouldn't expect. Also the Multifort in terms of what it, it means for the collection or for the brand Mito, pardon me, it really is an important line for Mito. In 1934, it was unveiled as their first automatic watch. Uh, and I think a lot of people just commonly associate the Ocean Star, maybe the Commander with the overall brand, but this is a great watch if you're going for something for the everyday. Now this version here is a bit more dressed up compared to some of the other multi-forts, 42 millimeter case, 49 millimeter lug to lug, so that should offer some really good wearability for a case size of that type, a water resistance of 100 meters, and you're also getting another 80 hour power reserve movement within. So now to close out, looking at a few other awesome everyday watches, really getting close to the higher end of our budget, and I think these are, if you're going to stretch all the way, probably some of the best options you can go for, starting with the Hamilton Khaki Field Murph. So if you're not familiar with this watch, uh, chances are many people that are going to commonly associate this one, of course, with the Christopher Nolan film Interstellar. And there's a lot of just design cues throughout this piece that will, of course, cater to the prop watch that was used in that film. Probably most notably, the Morse code sequence that is going to be on the second hand, being able to be translated to the term Eureka. So if you are a film nut, there's even just more intrigue probably with this design. Uh, but very beautiful cathedral style handset. They are kind of aged, uh, superficial loomed markers on the dial. The most notable thing here though is a 42 millimeter case and extended out 52 millimeter lug to lug. So if you want something that is gonna wear a little bit larger, this would certainly be the watch. But this is an attractive looking timepiece and I would say from Hamilton, a bit distinct, but then you also have those film elements that could really maybe bring in some other types of consumers that maybe normally wouldn't look in this direction and could be a great option for around a thousand bucks for a do it all style watch. So next we're gonna be looking at the Seiko SPB-167. So this is a member of the Sharp Edge family of watches. Recently did a side-by-side -side review of this watch versus looking at the Tissot Gentleman Powermatic 80. And I was very surprised because when doing a poll on my Instagram, many people were actually siding with the Seiko despite the $250 price difference between these two. And this is a fantastic everyday watch and I would definitely recommend checking out that video to kind of see the side-by-side. -side. The number one thing that's leading this collection in this whole Sharp 
Edge series is the dial finish. I mean, the dial looks spectacular for a watch of around $1,000. The bracelet is a step forward as well compared to some of the other options that we've seen from Sega, which is not saying very much, but definitely a step in the right direction. The clasp system is just so much better compared to things that we've seen from Seiko in the past. And then also 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, and you're also getting the newer Seiko 6R35 with that 70 hour power reserve in here. But I think for those out there that are just looking at this piece, that dial is the number one talking point. Uh, so definitely check out that video down below. I can link to it in the description. So now as we kind of progress here, we start to get into some other styles and brands and Germany is starting to really creep in here at this $1,000 price range with some amazing options here. So first looking at Damasco. So I am currently wearing a Zin 556. And for a long time, you could be able to get this watch for under $1,000, but that has since changed. And if you're going for a watch of a similar style, maybe you don't want to stretch for the Zin, uh, but also get a lot of this high tech uh, with the case treatment. The Damasco DS30 is a great option to look at. It is a little bit larger in its wear compared to the 556 with that lug to lug distance, but you are getting some up the resistance with the case treatment. So these are also rated to 1200 HV on the Vickers hardness scale. And when you're contrasting that with Zen, you're not gonna be seeing that for probably another 800 to $1,000 typically with their tegumented cases. This is not something that's an entry level feature on Zinn's watches. You're also getting 200 meters of water resistance, so really solid build construction, sapphire, crystal, and then getting that very clean dial surface with great legibility. And then to close out with one of my favorite brands and probably one of the most underrated manufacturers out there, especially from Germany, with Müller Glasuta with the Panova Blue. You could also throw in the green here, but I personally like the blue a bit more because I think it'll be, uh, it's kind of more versatile. 100 meters of water resistance on this piece, sapphire crystal, that sunburst blue dial finish, it really does pop and you're getting some more funky and fun uh, secondary colors with the design with the pop of orange throughout the dial. So if you're not familiar with Müller, they are a brand with great history in the world of marine chronometers, uh, motorcycle sp speedometers, so they were making uh, those for the likes of BMW and have a ton of history. And it wasn't until the last 30 years where they started to shift into watches after one of their marine chronometer customers actually suggested and asked for it uh, for very robustly made watches that they can have for some of their sailors on ships. And Mula obliged to this offer and request and has now really embedded a lot of that original ethos of the brand within many of their timepieces. This movement here is a Swiss Salita caliber, but Mula is actually deconstructing and then reconstructing the movement with their uh, regulator nexus System. They call it their woodpecker neck regulator, which is going to offer some fine tune adjustment as well as resistance against shock. So these are watches that are very well constructed. They look the part and are much different than I think a lot of people would maybe look at when looking at this price range of $1,000, but a very good watch for the price and for the money. All right, guys, well, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Took some time to put together, so really would appreciate that. Which of these watches was your favorite of all of them? And also, check out all the relevant links in the description down below to some other helpful articles, as well as at Nomos Club uh, mentioned at the beginning. As you start getting right above $1,000, there's a ton of different options that will open up to you. Uh, but this is, I think, a great way to just look at this under $1,000 price tier uh, in a pretty holistic way. Of course, I can't mention all of them, so if there's any other watches you think should be on people's radar, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you're in the market for a watch, teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, full factory warranty for all the brands that we carry. So if something goes wrong, you're not having to pay the bill for it. Quick and fast fulfillment. Also offer price match. So if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form on the product page, we'll reach out to you. And nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into this content that we're creating. And if you wanna stay up to date with the content, couple other great places to look. Instagram, of course, see some cool photos of watches and what's coming down the pipe. And then Teddy Ball, the Sutter Reviews, our second YouTube channel where we cover uh, just in-depth reviews of watches that we sell on teddybaldister.com. So it should be a great place to get some more just content, of course, if you're all about watches and helping to make some buying decisions. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.